BMW have always combined sporty driving and luxury in their 7 series and this brand new 7 is the longest, largest one yet and the one with the most tech. Now that's tech under the bonnet. It's got a hybrid, a strong hybrid, a big V8 and an all electric version all combined within the 7 series and the most tech on the inside. It's got that crazy huge screen for the back seat. It's got the most luxurious interiors yet. BMW says they've stepped it up from the regular 7 series. It's a big step ahead. Just how much is it? We have the car with us in sunny California. We're in Palm Springs and we're going to tell you just what it's like. Yes, in this review, we'll tell you about both the V8 petrol hybrid and the all-electric i7. We'll tell you what they like to drive, what the cabin is like to sit in, and of course, what that huge rear screen is like. But first, the new 7's striking looks. So immediately a very different look to the 7, a flat long bonnet, much more of a cliff, well that comes a bit from Rolls Royce and the twin headlight identity not here, it's now split top and bottom, very different for BMW. The grille in typical BMW fashion is large, radical and designed to polarize opinion. It won't be to everyone's taste but like the other BMWs, this one is also likely to be an acquired taste. But what do you think of it? Tell us in the comments below. Along the side, this is the longest 7 series yet and the one that's built on the longest wheelbase. Now, not too dramatic when it comes to lines and details, but you have a nice crisp, taut looking sideline, a strong shoulder line. Yes, that Hofmeister kink, it's still there. And a very interesting matrix here in the tail lamps. The new 7 is also sculpted to give it a block-like feel. Replete with flat surfaces and chamfered edges, it looks like it's cut from a single block of metal. It isn't easy to tell the electric i7 from the regular 7, but look closely and you will see blue highlights and other little details. One clue is that the grille isn't real and it gets more efficient and different alloys. Up next, the car's USB, that big 31-inch flat-screen 8K TV. Now, some manufacturers call the higher rear seat theatre seating, but it's more suited to this car. This here is the 7 Series' standout feature. And that's real theatre seating for you. The screen comes down, adjusts itself, the blind at the back prevents reflections and allows you to enjoy your viewing and on the screen here you have a whole array of options. Let's see if we can hook up YouTube and the auto car show. The screen can be adjusted to make viewing more comfortable. With the Bowers and Wilkins system the sound can go really loud. I can adjust the aspect ratio of the screen. I can make it smaller. I can shift it towards the right to help me view it better. I can bring it closer. I can take it back if I want and I can move it towards the right. I can shift the position of the display. I can take it towards the left for the left passenger or towards the right here and bring it over towards me. I click the display off. The screen is almost centered on me and that makes it a natural sort of viewing experience. BMW also cleverly have left this part open so that your peripheral vision picks up the road ahead and you don't feel car sick. Yes, some people will feel car sick when they watch the screen here, but in general, it's nice to have this slot here where you can see the road ahead and you know your system knows that you're on the move. Pre-installed are Amazon Fire TV, Amazon Prime, Netflix, YouTube, and here in the US, you also have 5G where available. Rear seat comfort is also excellent and that's despite the i7's big battery. The floor is a bit higher than the regular 7 series and that's because there's that big battery there below you. So it is slightly more knees up but the good thing is that this seat can really be adjusted to give you more support and comfort. You do that from the controller here and it's even easy to stretch out. Now I've selected lounge position 
and the front seat is tucking forward this is giving me plenty of space and this lazy boy section is rising up as well now I've adjusted the seat to the lounge position and yes here of course the comfort is tremendous I've had the massage function on the seat is being cooled and you have the soft pillow here you can just rest your head back on and relax up above there's also the huge panoramic sunroof and BMW Sky Lounge which at night uses LED light threads to help uplift your mood. The dashboard up ahead is also very cutting edge. You don't have an abundance of wood, leather and chrome but in its place is an edgy style with new forms and new materials. Think a modern design interior versus a more Victorian look. There are also plenty of interesting details. Let's start with this door panel. Nice suede or alcantara fabric here beautifully done leather gives it a rich feeling the seat pictogram is in crystal and this mesh here covers the Bowers and Wilkins speakers and it even lights up at night giving it a nice 3d depth even more interesting is this panel of light that lights up and goes all the way across the dash it has a nice 3d finish it changes color but the good thing is that even on the move in the night it doesn't dazzle you and isn't too bright it works seamlessly with the interior and adds a lot also interesting is that the air vents aren't in your face they're here they're hidden and although they do give you a good volume of air you can adjust them from here should you need to what remains to be seen is just how well they hold up in a hot and sweltering conditions and the new 7 also gets these push button doors press a button and that happens and even neater is the fact that you can open all four doors by asking the assistant hey BMW open all doors and you can even close them hey BMW close all doors <laughs> isn't that neat the floating armrest is familiar and there's BMW's curved display but there are a couple of new features here. As I demonstrated earlier the voice assistant is more active. You still have to go into this climate menu to adjust things like fan speed which is a bit of a pain but you can customize a lot of this. You can keep your own telephone here, personal assistant, route preview and you can add widgets whenever you like. There is a traditional menu, you can go into that as well if you need something quick, uh, radio, uh, the vehicle, seat comfort, these seats are massaging, heated, cooled, of course. There's a new heads up display which really does help in situations where you don't need to take your eyes off the road and it gives you navigation prompts and stuff like that. And of course, because this is an electric car, you get the i menu here which gives you all sort of driving data. The new 7 also previews an all new level of comfort on the move. But first, here's what the new i7 drives like. Now in its most supple setting, the ride on the 7 series is a good bit better than the earlier car. There's a suppleness here that just wasn't there. There's more travel to the springs, to the air springs. And the new 7 even rides flatter and doesn't move you around as much. The 7 series has clearly benefited from sister company Rolls-Royce's expertise here. The air suspension, active dampers, active anti-roll bars all working fabulously in sync. A tougher test will follow on our roads but this clearly is a new high for the 7. Also improved is acoustic damping. It's more silent on the move now. You get less road noise and noise from outside the car. The insulation is better. And these factors take comfort to another level. That said, there is a bit of wind noise, especially around the A pillar. And this is more audible because this is an electric. That apart, the new i7 is super refined and super smooth. Now driving the i7 along is an absolute pleasure 
The throttle is beautifully metered. You can squeeze it lightly and the i7 gets going with an effortlessness that's very impressive and gratifying. You can tap it harder and get a nice burst of power. And the throttle in fact is so linear, it's extremely enjoyable to drive at even low and medium speeds. What's also nice is that even when you tap the throttle a bit harder, there's no explosion of torque, just a nice strong gathering of pace that feels so natural. This could be a large capacity combustion engine. And that's exactly what BMW wants. In sport, you have more performance and more sound. Now put it in sport and you get the full effect of this Hans Zimmer soundtrack. And the space age sound really does work pretty well. Let's listen to that again. <laughs> Not bad. Five hundred and forty-four electric horses are sent down to all four wheels and a hundred kilometers an hour comes up in just 4.7 seconds. It even does a launch. Ooh, that's nice. Wow. <laughs> and it's a big seven series. It's a large limo. Well, super. Absolutely. Two cars in one. Remember, this car weighs 2.7 tons. What also makes driving this car feel effortless is the steering and how well it points into corners. The steering has a good amount of feel and weight. It feels balanced in corners and happy to turn in. And then what really gets you going is that the faster you go, the neater and nicer the i7 drives. There's no big pitching, there's no sudden movement, it's just a quiet, relaxed confidence and that gives you the ability to drive it at a fair lick, but in a relaxed manner. And that's pretty special. The new petrol hybrid 760 is now a twin turbo V8 rather than a V12, but it gets 18 horsepower and 200 Nm of electric boost. The engine has also been worked on by the M division. Now select sport and you do get a bit of a rumble from the V8 and then when you put your foot down, wow, yes, this does perform like an extremely sporty BMW. The engine as ever is happy to rev, there's a nice pop when it shifts up and a tremendous driving experience especially with all that torque on hand. The petrol hybrid in fact is faster than the i7 EV and takes 4.2 seconds to 100. Where it truly eats up the electric however is in mid-range grunt and elasticity. Put your foot down and the V8 with the help of the electric and the quick acting gearbox delivers a slug of torque and performance that's more end performance than limousine. And I even love the manner in which it pulls forward effortlessly even on a light throttle. The V8 bubbling away in the background. BMW's new 7 has closed the gap to the S-Class. This much is clear. Much more of a luxury car now, it delivers levels of comfort that are up there with the best, has loads of individual character and even manages to endear itself to drivers. Factor in the funky new interior, some genuinely new and appealing features and the fact that it's propulsion agnostic. You choose between a petrol hybrid or the EV powertrain and you have a luxury car that sits right at the cutting edge. To go on sale at a price of Rs 1.7 crore for the 740i or Rs 1.95 crore for either the 760i or the i7 tested here, it is a car that has what it takes to go up against the best and give it a run for its money. Don't look in the rearview mirror Mercedes, 
BMW's new 7 is right alongside.